Japanese horror, frequently abbreviated to J-horror, has a long history. With well-known ghost tales stretching all the way back to the Edo period, we would later be introduced to their cinema horror that invaded the DVD shelves in the new millennium. One can calmly state that there are a lot of J-horror films at this point, with a wide range of different styles. Even though there is one in particular which seems to have gotten tremendously more popular. So I decided to make my own top 10 list counting down my favourite J-horror films. Because there is so much to choose from, I've tried to narrow it down by only including films that are clear horror. Those that are just very extreme, dark, gory, or leans too much towards the comedy genre will not be included. Alright, number 10, Noroi the Curse. Before there was paranormal activity, there was this. Well, the Blair Witch Project was earlier than this, so maybe its use of the found footage technique wasn't that groundbreaking, but it's a nice movie regardless. This jerky camera fake documentary is directed by Koji Shireishi. We get to view the material from a documentary on the paranormal. The creator of this, a man named Kobayashi, has mysteriously disappeared. Here we get to see his final work and what may have actually happened to him. It includes a lot of bizarre events and characters, all leading to a terrifying ending. Number 9. Audition It starts out as a nice romantic movie. Wrapped in some dark comedy, we have widower Shigeharu, who meets this beautiful but quiet and mysterious Asumi, after having set up some fake auditions for a female role that doesn't exist. And this crazy sham actually pays off as these two are soon dating and falling in love. But wait here a second. Oh right, it was directed by Takashi Miki. So all of this eventually turns into a much more violent and graphic horror, as this Asami turns out to be a lot more than just a little introverted. But this is a lot more than just some gory snuff film, and it offers much more than the iconic torture scene. It's a surprisingly elegant piece that makes some social commentary on modern dating, and it's dark. <laughs> Number 8, Kaidan. Let's head back to the classical era of Japanese cinema, a time where brilliant use of costumes, backdrops and soundtracks created an explosion of gorgeous masterpieces, and Kwaidan from 1964 might be the prime example of this. This is an anthology consisting of four individual tales, but my personal favourite is the second story called The Woman of the Snow. It's based on the Japanese folklore Yuki Onna, and it introduces us to the Snow Witch. After killing a woodcutter during a heavy snowstorm, this creature decides to spare his companion under the condition that he will never tell anyone about what just happened. It's not necessarily scary, but offers a wonderful climate in its impeccable design. Number 7. Loft What's this? As I said, this is my personal top 10 list, and I think this choice may emphasize that fact. Directed by Kyoshi Kurosawa, it tells a story about a female writer who moves to the countryside to work on her book. She shortly discovers that she has a neighbor who's hiding a corpse as it seems, and she vomits mud. Yeah, it's a bit odd, and once you think the pieces are finally coming together, it gets even weirder. So the plot may be a bit tricky to follow, but it's still a fun ride to let yourself get dragged into this bizarre world where the characters are getting odds by the second. I hate seeing how underrated this film is, and hope it will get its well-deserved credits in due time. Number 6. Don't Look Up Another underrated horror film from a director with much more acknowledged work on his record. It's a movie about the making of a movie, but the production does not run so smoothly as the studio seems to be haunted by someone. It's slow-paced and frankly quite restricted with the frights, but trust me, this is a proper horror film with some eerie shots of the dark ceiling space as well as some old film roles. This is a good example of how well traditional ghost stories and the modern Asian horror comes together, and there are even better examples to come from the very same director. Number 5. Juan the Grudge The haunted house and the croaking woman crawling towards you. It's a modern classic that is enormously associated with modern J-horror at this point, thanks to its spooky concept and creative, if not somewhat goofy attempts, to scare its audience. We get to follow a group of people who in some way or another has gotten in contact with the curse that lies on this house, and what follows that. This isn't Takashi Shimizu's first Yon movie, but is however his first Yon movie with a theatrical release. It may not measure up to his original, despite the higher budget, but it holds up enough to make it onto this list. Number 4. Cairo 
another film from Kiyoshi Kurosawa, but this time a much more well-known one. It embodies what J-horror is famous for, supernatural horror meeting modern technology. In this case, that is the internet. This was back in 2001, yet its message regarding our relationship to the web is just as relevant to this day. Of course, the thoughtful reflections and messages that Kaido addresses are presented as the shape of a typical ghost story. It's an extremely unpleasant viewing experience, witnessing all these people going from normal to these apathic empty shells, and see the big and vibrant metropolitan Tokyo turning into a deserted ghost town. There are many layers to explore in this film, Number 3. Dark Water My second Hideo Nakata film on this list. It's actually based on a really nice short story called Floating Water, written by Koji Suzuki. We get to follow a mother and daughter as they move into a very shabby flat in a very shabby building. And the damp patch on the ceiling is just the beginning of a series of terrifying events that will eventually play tricks on our protagonist's mentality. In many ways, Dark Water is a very typical J-horror. We have the cameos of the little ghost girl, and of course the underlying theme of water. One can easily spot many parallels between this and another movie from the same director. But out of all the contenders on this list, this is probably the most moving one. It's a very emotional story and gives you a lot to appreciate on many levels. The story, the horror, the settings and visuals all come together in what I would almost consider a masterpiece. Number 2. Juon Another Juon film, only this time it's the V Cinema version, and the first full length film Takeshi Shimizu ever did. It's set in the same house as in his later version, but shot with a way smaller budget. But trust me, the lack of resources does not hold this back. It's told in a non chronological order, but other than that, everything is very uncomplicated and straightforward, and it's effective. This piece is filled with a lot of terrifying bits that would introduce us to one of J Horror's most iconic ghosts. Number 1. Ringu This may not come as a surprise, but what else but Ringu? This is the one that started the new wave of Asian horror that would take the world by storm in the new millennium, and rightfully so. Again we get the wonderful combination of Japanese urban legends meeting modern technology well, back then. Something which we would not see the last of. Ringu centers around a cursed videotape that kills whoever watches it after seven days. The story is brilliant, thanks to the original novel, written by Koji Suzuki. But what elevates this even further is the incredible horror. The dark and damp locations, combined with some discreet squeaky sound effects in the background, brings a perfect atmosphere. Watching Ringu is like entering a bad dream, in a good way. On top of that, this introduced us to the most iconic ghost in J-horror. Its cultural impact on horror cinema is indisputable. And for that reason, I've chosen this as my number one. And it's also the third Hideo Nakata film that made it onto this list. Not bad. Thank you for watching.